we are going to look at the purpose of the church. I'm talking about the body of believers. And I'm not talking about the building. There's a big difference. And we're looking at, first of all, number one, worship. <clears throat> the New Testament church came together to worship God. And if you went to any lay to see in church today, primary most of those churches today seem to be for self. For how wonderfully God can bless you. What you can do for the ministry. And God is left out. Even his great hymns are left out. They also had a, a day on which they met for worship. John 20, verse 19, the same day at evening being the first day of the week when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto him, Peace be unto you. In verse 26 of the same chapter, after eight days again his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. And then came Jesus, the doors being sh shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. So, the first day of the week, it is never called Sunday in the scriptures. Scripture from Genesis 1 is called the first day, the second day. Sunday is a Roman holiday for the sun god. You know, as Christians, we need to escape the Catholic Church. We need to escape out of paganism. And we need to get back in the Bible. There will be no revivals when you hold on to your paganism. There will be no revivals when you hold on to Romanism. The biblical form is called the first day. Acts 20. Acts 20. Verse 7. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached. First Corinthians 16.2 Upon the first day of the week, So, it is established upon the first day of the week. Now, there is a religion, Seventh-day Adventists, who proclaim that going to church on Sunday, or the first day of the week, is you are of the Antichrist, you are of the beast. And they will take part on the Sabbath, Saturday. When the scriptures tells us the New Testament church, it is the first day of the week, not the Sabbath. We're not under the law. The first day of the week is the day of the resurrection. Look at Mark 16, 9. Now, when Jesus was risen early, the first day of the week. So if he was risen the third, first day of the week, three days, three days and three nights, he arose on the first day of the week. That means he didn't die on a good Friday. He died on a Wednesday. 
Most of your proper churches meet on a Wednesday night. That, commem that commemorates the death of Jesus. I've been in churches where they had Thursday night. Well, I'm not going to say it's wrong, but the death and burial of Jesus Christ is Wednesday and the first day of the week. And it's the day which Pentecost fell. And they preached Jesus the first time as the resurrected Lord. Acts 2. I mean, let's just look at the scriptures. Acts 2.36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel... Know assuredly that God has made this same Jesus, whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were picked, pricked in the heart, and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? There is the beginning of the first church. And Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for remission of sin. And he shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now we're going to transition from this point of Acts 2.38 to a Gentile means of salvation and process of church service. Right now we're in the early Hebrew Jewish church. So now number two we'll look at The extent of worship, Acts 2.42. And they continue steadfastly in apostles' doctrine, teaching, and fellowship, and breaking the bread, and in prayers. So they met the first day of the week to break bread. That's the Lord's Supper. On the first day of the week. The Lord's Supper. The breaking of bread. In that connection. They had preaching. Acts 20. Acts 20 verse 7. The first day of the week. When the disciples came together. Breaking bread. Lord's Supper. Paul preached unto them. Paul preached the Lord's Supper and they preached. And they gave of their means as they had been prospered. 1 Corinthians 16. 1 Corinthians 16. One. Wait a minute. First Corinthians sixteen. One. Now concerning the collection of the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God has prospered him, and there be no gatherings when I come. So, you meet on the first day of the week. You preach on the first day of the week. You have a breaking the bread, the Lord's Supper, the first day of the week. You have a collection. And notice, I did not say tithes. The New Testament church is not under tithes. We are under what God has blessed you. God loves a cheerful giver. And what I'm teaching right now to some Baptist preachers, that's a great sin because you know what? They lack the faith. Not you. They want to make sure that the money keeps coming in for their paycheck and then for the bills. But there were no 
expenses for the church of a building and all that and the land because they met in everybody's house. There was no church building. Someone would give up of their house for the meeting. Now, did they help the person pay their bills? Maybe. In their services, they were taught doctrine. So they had teaching, Acts 2, Acts 2.42. And they continued steadfastly in the doctor's doc, the apostles' doctrine, that's teaching, and fellowship, breaking of bread, Lord's Supper, and prayers. Again in verse 42, they had prayers. So the New Testament church was come together breaking of bread in fellowship, the Lord's Supper, prayers, and giving of what God has blessed you, some more, some less. He also had in Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 12, saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren, in the midst of the church will I sing praises unto thee. They sang and worshiped God in preaching, in doctrine, in giving, in the Lord's Supper, in fellowship, in prayers, I don't know if I said that, and in singing. This is, this is the church. Preaching number three, preaching and teaching. Matthew 28, Matthew 28, 20, teaching them to deserve all things whatsoever I command you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Mark 16, 15. He said, Go ye in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So there was preaching, and you'll have some. Well, we don't believe in preaching. Then you're not biblical. And they had teaching. There's a difference between preaching and teaching. Teaching is a set for a means of learning. Preaching is to exalt. It's to edify. They went everywhere preaching or teaching the people the gospel. Read Acts 8, 1 through 12. And the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Mark 16, 20. And when they went forth, preach everywhere, and the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. Now, signs was confirming the word. Jews require a sign. When all 66 books were completed, there are no more signs. And by the time of the end of Paul's ministry, there are the end of the signs. The signs died out by the end of Acts. The signs were the signs of the apostles, 2 Corinthians,
2 Corinthians 12, 12, and 12 being the number of Israel. Truly the signs of the apostles were wrought among you in all patience, in signs and wonders and mighty deeds. And there is no class of people today, the apostles, the apostles, the athletic church, or all that. The apostles are dead. The signs are gone. We are truly under faith and the word of God. So the signs ceased. First Corinthians thirteen verses eight. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part. And we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. So that which is perfect came. And that which is the perfect law of liberty, James 1.25, which is also perfect that the it furnishes Unto all good works, Second Timothy three seventeen. We must not add to or take away from the contents. Revelation twenty two eighteen nineteen. Don't mess with the word of God to prove a heresy that you teach. Okay. There is a healing, but I can't heal you. Only God can heal you. So, number four, there is praying in the New Testament church. Prayer to God is through Jesus Christ. Colossians 1, 3. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ Praying always for you. 317. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all to the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him, by Jesus. Not by Mary. Not by Pope. Not by angels. Romans 12.12 12. Romans 12.12 12. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continually instant in prayer. Don't give up on your prayers. Don't stop your prayers. And it must be in faith, James 1. James 1. Verse 6. Well, let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is un, is like, yeah, like a wave of the sea driven from the wind of the... And to, don't pray for something you don't believe God's going to answer. When you pray for something, pray to God's able. I mean, Aunt Susie may have cancer, and you're praying for Aunt Susie, but, you know, God may not be able to handle that's wrong. Pray with the power that God is able. Believe in the power of God. In James 4, 3. You ask and receive not because you ask and miss. That you, that you may consume it upon your lusts. Don't ask for lustful things in your prayer life. 
Oh, Lord God, give me a million dollars. Lord God, give me that red Corvette. Lord God, give me... No, 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 no. Come on. Pray reasonably. Pray rightfully. And pray always. And five, the breaking of bread, the Lord's Supper. This was done each Lord's Day or the first day of the week, Acts 20. Acts 20. Verse 7, upon the first day of the week when the disciples came to break bread, Paul preached unto them. So should your Lord, sir, so, excuse me, so should your church have the Lord's Supper every Lord's day of the week. What's the scripture say? That's the question. What's the scripture say? Should your church have a prayer time the first day of the week? What's the scripture say? Should your church have a preaching and teaching session on the first day of the week? What did the scripture say? It was observed at the church of Torahs, Acts 20, verse 7. The church in Corinth, 1 Corinthians 11. Even Christians were to examine themselves and partake of it worthy. 1 Corinthians, how about the Lord's Supper? 11, 28. Let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the, that bread, breaking the bread, and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthy, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak, and sickly among you many sleep, dead. When you partake of the Lord's Supper, you're to examine yourself. You're to examine any unconfessed sin. You are to examine yourself. Are you living a proper Christian life? And if you're not, you are in a you are living an abomination. Even as a Christian before the Lord God, you are living in sin. Openly or secretly. You're not to take part in the breaking of bread, the Lord's Supper. And there are people who have died because of that. There are people who are sick because of it. There are people who are weak because they partake of that Lord's Supper of no regard to what it is. Examine yourselves. And what say is the scriptures if they did it every first day of the week and your church doesn't? That's why we got a weak Laodicean church age. That's why we got a sickly Laodicean church age. The giving, number six. And it's never a certain sum, 10% tithing. It is more blessed to give than to receive, Act 20.35. There were some that gave their homes and sold all, Acts 4. But you were to bring your offering, we read in 1 Corinthians 16, 1 and 2, on the first day of the week. And you will not ever find in the New Testament church tithing. Give your 10%. And then the preacher runs over to the Old Testament, Malachi, 
you know, bring in the storehouses and God will fill you up, but we're not under the law. Then why are you running to the law? Why are you running to the Old Testament book? The New Testament doctors run from the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ to Revelation. Even the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, seven-eighths of the Gospels are not New Testament. Christ had not died yet. He wasn't buried yet. He hadn't risen from the dead yet. The moment he died brought forth the New Testament. You can't have death. And testament without no death. You give what you can for the help of other Christians. Number seven. Singing or music in the New Testament church. There is no account in the New Testament church of no mechanical instrument of music ever being used in the church. Now in the Old Testament, there was the harp. You see, we find the harp in the book of Revelation. Yeah, but it's not in the church. You find David discovering and making up invention of music instruments, but not in the church. Find me one place that a musical instrument is written in the pages of the Bible from Acts to Revelation with the church. In A.D. 657 is when the organs began to show up in the Catholic Church. They sang 1 Corinthians 14, 15, Ephesians 5, 19, Colossians 3, 16, Hebrews 2, 12 in the church. Is it wrong to have musical instruments? Well, today you got electrical guitars and you got drums. You got the saxophone. You got musical instruments today in the church is anything but holy. So what do you say? Listen, we are in defiance of evolution. You see what's that mean? Everything's not getting better. Everything's getting worse. Things deteriorate. The church has deteriorated. Because you've got everything but preaching and teaching. And the preaching and teaching has become sloppy. And has become unholy. You got the offerings, you got, the, you know, messages coming out of the pulpit, you know, give tithes and pledges, and, and that ain't in the scriptures. You got ungodly music, you got the weird prayers and chants. You got things that are loud in the church house that are foreign to the New Testament church. That if we want to do right, we need to get back to the Bible. We need to close up our church buildings and get back to the church houses and get back to serving God correctly. That's going to be the revival. 